These are my five top tips for marketing teams that are using Airtable, or maybe they're about to use Airtable. So stick around to the end because point number five is really a game changer, I think. If you're new here, hi, my name is Alex. And yeah, on this channel, we talk about automation, AI, Airtable, and really anything and everything in between. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get going. So tip number one, if you're just starting out, consider using ChatGPT as your AI Airtable expert. Now, the first thought that came to my mind when I was just starting out in Airtable database building was to actually use a template. That's okay, that's not a bad idea, but lately, more often than not, I'm actually using ChatGPT to help me create the design for my Airtable database. It's more curated because I can tell it exactly what I'm doing and exactly what I'm looking for. And I can use it as an expert to guide me in that process. So here's a quick example. I've created a quick prompt over here in ChatGPT. I'm a marketing manager at a firm that specializes in the distribution of sanitary wear. We would like to use Airtable, blah, blah, blah. Can you please create a database schema for me? Off we go. And this is gonna take a little bit of time and it's gonna give us the whole schema. Okay, so we have our response. We have our basic schema. Now, if you're happy with it, the next step is to basically tell it to generate a quick XLS and X file that we can import into Airtable. Please generate a XLS X file so that I can import the schema into Airtable. Again, this is going to take a little bit of time. All right. And here it is. Let's just download it and let's jump into Airtable. And I'm going to press import over here. I'm going to choose the correct workspace to import this. And I'm just going to press continue now. Choose Microsoft Excel, browse files. And here's my schema. Upload the file and just press import. And there you have it. Now you have your curated, specially designed to your needs database design in Airtable. All you probably need to do is just link everything, but that's not a major thing. But the most important tip here is use AI as your Airtable expert in the beginning so that you're building on a good foundation for the future. So tip number two is a little bit controversial. Also, it's a little bit theoretical, but I see this happening every week in our line of work. So a lot of people want to begin using Airtable for their marketing teams, but they are trying to change their team members to kind of like comply and get out of using Dropbox, get out of using Google Sheets. And yet that's not exactly the correct approach to get your team involved in your Airtable master plan. Let people use the tools that they want to use in order to produce what they need to produce. But use Airtable as the place where their key KPIs are going to be reported from. So I can continue using Dropbox and making a mess of different versions of uh, different, let's say, digital assets. I can continue using my Excel because that's where I like to track things. But when it comes to teamwork, I, as a team member, need to put my latest, greatest work inside of Airtable because that's where the rest of my colleagues are going to be going to fetch the things that they need. That's where my CEO is going to get his reporting from. That's where my manager can check my KPIs. Don't try to restrict your colleagues into adapting to Airtable. Just use it as a central knowledge base for the things that matter. Tip number three, and that is if you're running a small team of like two or three or a team of 50, do consider using interfaces for everybody to be able to collaborate together in a safe way. What do I mean by that? Airtable, generally speaking, historically has been viewed as this sort of, you know, like spreadsheet with a hat sort of thing. But it's also been quite difficult to control exactly what people can do and see. That's why nowadays we have front ends for Airtable. You use Airtable data and you create almost like an app or a website or something like that that sits on top of that data and controls it, almost like a puppet master. You have a few options in this sort of endeavor if you want to go down that route. Option number one, it's kind of like the easiest, closest thing. That is Airtable's own interface designer. 
Now, as you can see, I've got a basic interface going on. This is like the builder environment. But if I want to just go into it here, it now starts to look way more like a CRM sort of thing. And also using this method will allow you to have way more control over who can see and do what from your team or your stakeholders, so to speak. Now, my personal favorite front-end builder for Airtable has always been noloco.io. It's been around for a while now. It allows you to really have granular controls over permissioning. So I can definitely, for every single field, control who can see and do what. Not so much the case with Airtable's interfaces. So this is a little bit more advanced as a platform. I just prefer this to the original interfaces. Plus it's a little bit cheaper per person. So if you're dealing with your internal team, plus you're probably having a list of external third parties like freelancers and so forth, who you really want to share a very, very small subset of your data, Noloco is a little bit better suited for that sort of thing. Definitely think about using some kind of front end for your Airtable data. Tip number four, and that is especially when it comes to content marketing, make sure that you have some kind of an automation set up to notify you of deadlines. I know this is kind of like self-explanatory, but a lot of people try to like manage things within Airtable's grid view and it just becomes difficult. Some of the most favorite things that some of our clients have been using are number one, maybe potentially subscribing to a calendar I count link. Very simple to do. Here is a calendar view of an event planning database, and this is my schedule tab. So all I have to do is just go to share view, sync an external calendar, and I immediately get my iCal link. All I have to do is just take that and paste it into my Google Cal, and I can immediately see all the changes that are happening in here. And Google Calendar will also notify me when an upcoming event or task, whatever it is, is coming up. Now, the geekier way of doing this is probably using some kind of like an automation platform like Make or Zapier. Now, not that long ago, I did a quick tutorial about how to schedule notifications like a pro. So go ahead and check that out. I've left a link down in the description below. So we're going to be closing our list with tip number five. And that is, again, it's a bit of a controversial statement, but if a human can think it, or needs to make a decision on something, AI can do it too. And this is especially pertinent to marketing and maybe marketing agencies more specifically. So anything from brand identity to content ideation or fine tuning to ROI analysis, it can all be done using AI. Now, a huge inspiration for this is my friend and mastermind buddy, Josh Schuston. So I've left his uh, LinkedIn profile down in the description. So go ahead and check him out. So yeah, he's really kind of like on the warpath of making sure that marketing agencies really get the most out of AI in this day and age. And he's been really sharing a lot of interesting ideas of how much can be done via AI almost makes me fear for marketing agencies. So if you're a marketing agency owner, make sure to get your ducks in a row because AI is coming. In fact, no, AI is already here. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these five tips have helped you even a little bit or just given you even one idea. Let me know down in the description below if you want to see more of this kind of content. I'll make sure to reply to absolutely every single comment as much as possible. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.